morning, everybody. Let's give Michael another round of applause. Thank you, and thank you for sharing that beautiful story about your granddaughter. You know, this platform is a platform of love, and so love is always welcome here on this platform. So thank you for sharing that. My name is Dr. Alice Reed, and I'm the spiritual leader here, and I'm so glad to be with you here yet again on a Sunday morning. We are talking about this um, beautiful idea of grand rising. And so when I say grand rising, what do you say back? Grand rising. Right, grand rising. And it's the idea of, it's more than just good morning. It's an opportunity for us to greet each other and to want the best and the highest for each other. And the theme of this month is power to the people. And so we're talking about power in different ways. Um, I think that we talked about this a little last Sunday, that we think of power in a very conventional sense in the, out in the world at large. But when we talk about power here at Centers for Spiritual Living and this philosophy, we're really talking about power with versus power over. We're really talking about that thing that makes the grass grow and the energy that moves through it. And it moves through each one of us and it moves through all life. And so our opportunity is to, to have a richer relationship with power. We're also talking a little bit about money this month because it is our committed giving uh, a program. So every October we offer you an opportunity to support the community in whatever way works for you. There's um, a little display at the back of the sanctuary. I'm sorry those at home can't see that, but you'll have to come into the sanctuary to see it. It, it kind of represents the universe. And for everyone who renews their pledge or pledges for the first time, makes a commitment, uh, decides to tithe at whatever level, you'll get a star in the universe put up. And, and so I hope, you'll, I hope to see that board completely filled with folks who are supporting this amazing work that we do in the world um, each and every week of the year. Not just on Sundays, but through classes, through our friendship circles, through the um, affinity groups that meet throughout the week, through our yoga, through meditation. There's so many different ways that you can plug in and connect to this community and continue to rise up. Rise your, let your power be expanded from within because that's really where power lies. Contrary to popular opinion, money is not power. It may look like power because people buy a lot of things with it. They, they buy things, they buy, um, sometimes they buy influence, but it is not power. And I think our relationship to power shows up in our relationship to money. Our relationship to power often shows up in our relationships to money, and money is just a condition. It changes, right? When your mortgage or your rent's due on the beginning of the month, it, your, your balance goes down, and when you receive income from whatever source, your balance goes up. It, it is a constant flowing thing. It is a representative condition of energy in your life. And so when we can step into that um, more holistic and healthy relationship with money, or any condition for that matter, we begin to tap into true power, the power that comes from within. And I know that, you know, I've been there. I have totally been there, you know, scroll back, early marriage, little kids, trying to, you know, get it all together and make all the pieces connect, and sometimes they didn't. Sometimes, you know, I can remember you know, running out of oil in the furnace, right? And, and my ex-husband had just enough money to go get a little um, diesel fuel to put into the burner to keep us warm on the East Coast. And, um, and I haven't had that happen in a long time. 
And I know that that is uh, definitely a relationship that I have cultivated through my relationship with the power that lives within me. And so last week we really talked about expanding our idea of power, that, that power is, again, this thing this, that is intrinsic to the universal energy that moves through all life. And so this week we're going to be talking about your personal use of power. And one of the things that I thought that I would talk a little bit about is your personal use of power to vote. Now I'm relax, I'm not gonna, I know that we are, a, a, there are a lot of people who on the left side of the aisle and a lot of people on the right side of the aisle, so I'm not talking about that. But I want to talk about your power to vote. And the reason I want to talk about it is because I think it's a wonderful metaphor for how consciousness works. You know, I've heard people say, oh, I don't vote for the president. The electoral college votes for the president. My vote doesn't matter. Well, the fact is that the way that whole system works, and in most states, there's a handful that it works a little bit differently, but in most states, the popular vote then tells the electoral college how to vote. And then the electoral college votes for that party. And consciousness and the mental equivalent work very similar. The electoral college represents your action, and then the popular vote represents your subconscious. And the subconscious often is almost feels invisible and we pay atten more attention to the action as opposed to what's happening in the subconscious. But the fact is that all, we need all of those parts to really come to this place of electing um, a president in just a little over three weeks. <sighs> I don't know about you, I'll be glad when it's over. <laughs> There's a lot of people very passionate about that and the one thing that I think most of the people in my circle of influence and in my circle of friends realize that, you know, I, I have what's important to me, you have what's important to you, and we bless each other on the way because everybody is welcome here. Amen. Yeah. Everybody is welcome here. Um, and I, my, only, my only request is that you look at your values and that when you do vote, you vote in a way that is in accord with your values, that doesn't align with your values, because that's how we live this philosophy, by paying attention to the things that we value. And when we don't pay attention to the things that we value, we give away our power. We give it away all the time. I know, I'd maybe, I'm, it's probably just me. It's probably just me. <laughs> I'm driving down the road and somebody cuts me off and I say one of my favorite curse words, and uh, I'm giving away my power. The, the, the good news is that I have been, you know, practicing this philosophy long enough that I give myself the ability to and the permission and the forgiveness to have my initial reaction, and then the, the next step is the one that's most important. It's what I do with that reaction. It's how I um, notice what's going on in my consciousness how I choose what I want to do next. Road rage is when you don't choose what you do next. You follow that person who cut you off so they get to see you. And I, I know this because <laughs> it's been a long time. It's been a long time, but I know this because I've had that experience. And when we can pay attention to the bumps in the road, the emotional bumps in the road, then we have an ability to have conscious choice around our power and where we're going to deposit it and what we're going to do with it. Because that personal power that you have, it's not the power over other things, it's the power that moves through you. It's the power that allows you to express your authentic self. It's the power that comes up and tells you, oh, there's a little bump in my subconscious that I need to pay attention to. 
all of that is about me staying in my personal power and really beginning to recognize that I ha always have a choice. There's a, um, there's a little piece that, that I read from Don Beatty, who was the minister who put together this particular month's topics, and I really want to share it with you. He talks about how power shows up and out pictures in our life to reveal how our inner work is going. And he goes on to say that um, we have this opportunity to intentionally express our personal power instead of, and I love the way he put this, when we allow, it means we stand in power from a place of high watch, allowing our unity to determine how we express power, rather than from a place of separation, hurt, or seeking control. I, I mean, I think that that is a, beautifully put and succinct about our relationship with power. Either we are in relationship with a power that is unifying, that allows us to recognize that God is moving in as and through us all the time, or our relationship with power sometimes looks like feeling separate or seeing somebody else as separate or feeling like I have some control over somebody else. And yet this is, um, this is this idea of personal power is an idea of a unifying power where we remember that we are all in this together. You know, I love the, uh, the idea that the one thing that we all have in common, no matter what size you are, no matter what race you are, no matter what color your skin, no matter your gender, every human being has a pink tongue. Every human being has a pink tongue. And every human being, you know, when, you, when we, we all bleed the same color blood, we, we have so much more in common than we recall because oftentimes we see ourselves as separate because that person has that idea and that person has that idea and I don't like what that person is thinking. I want to I want to read a beautiful poem. It's one of my favorite books that I go to for inspiration. It's um Reflections by Mirabai Star, who is an amazing mystic and author. And um she wrote this book Mother of God Similar to Fire, and it's where she has portraits of the the different saints and mystics and she writes a poem about it and she this one's um uh, uh, it, the picture, you won't be able to see it very well, is of the black Madonna. And she writes, I am dark, daughters of Jerusalem, and I am beautiful. Black virgin, mother of us all, teach me to see the beauty in the mystery. Help me to relinquish my need to figure out the Holy One with the feeble tool of my intellect and instead encompass divine truth with my open heart. I love that. I love that because while our intellect is amazing, it is not the biggest part of who we are. The biggest part of who we are is the mystery that runs through each one of us. She goes on and says, I am tired of fighting for control. I am ready to lay down my sword at your gentle feet, blessed mother. Give me the courage to enter the secret cave where you hold the Redeemer nestled in your loving arms. Your face radiates from the gaze of the angels that surround you. Let me find my own true face reflected there. I do not see me, uh, and do not see me as only dark. The sun has started in me. And so Mirabai is reminding us of that false idea of this business called living where we think we have to control everything. When there is something, some mystery, some greater part of us that lives within us that is always accessible, always accessible when we allow ourselves to pause, 
when we allow ourselves to get quiet, when we allow ourselves to remember. It's easy to forget when somebody is pounding the table and, you know, shoving their opinions at me that I don't agree with. It's easy for me to forget when somebody I love is is being disempowered or hurt. It's easy for me to forget when I'm in pain. And yet I come to a place like this or take a class or read a poem and I remind myself of the mystery that is within me, which is representative of this personal power that we always have access to. Last week, I talked to you a little bit about um, an author, David Hawkins. And David Hawkins wrote two wonderful books. He's written a lot more than that, but two books, Power Versus Source, and then Letting Go, The path to Sur- Pathway to Surrender. Actually, it's the pathway of surrender. It's a little bit different, a little bit different way of seeing it, the pathway of surrender, because we always have that ability to surrender to that power within us. And so I want to say that if we're talking about power and we're talking about surrender, they feel like two opposing ideas. But what Hawkins wants us to know is that there's actually um, a... a um, a hierarchy of emotion that leads us to pa- uh, a powerful place of surrender. And so if you could, I have a, it's a little bit of a busy slide. It's, it talks about our vibrational frequency. So we're going we're gonna to pop into our left brain, <laughs> or this side is your left, and think about this idea of power and how it moves through us with our emotional body. And so he, he came up with this scale of emotions and how some of those emotions are contracted and some of those emotions are expanded. And you'll notice that some of the lower emotions are guilt and fear and apathy and anger. But when we reach courage, when we come to that place of courage, it helps us to get to a place of neutrality where we can begin to access the higher vibrational frequencies of our emotions. And these are the emotions that can help expand us. Willingness and acceptance and reason and love and peace. All of those are much more expansive emotions that we can work with. And the author of this graphic actually shows us how a correlation with our chakra system, right? And if you're feeling angry or fearful, where do you feel it in your body? For me, sometimes it's in, people tell me it's in their gut. I feel it at the base of my spine. When I'm afraid or nervous, I feel it in the base of my spine. And so this, this um, model of looking at our emotions gives us the ability to read the signals that our emotions and our body are telling us so that we can step into a place that is more enlightened and conscious. Your body temple and your emotions are your signposts along the way. And so when you find yourself in a place of pride or desire, you might notice that the, while pride sometimes you f- it feels good, when we move up to a place of joy instead of just pride, it's more expansive. And I'm sure if you think back to the last time you had an emotional experience, you can think and remember what your body temple did when you had that emotional experience. For instance, when a guy cut me off. I use that because it happens to all of us. It's such a human experience. Um, You know, that, that experience of feeling angry or somebody's taking that away from me, like my energy just collapsed when I have that experience. But when I'm like, I mean, when I come here on Sunday, I have this experience of joy and love because I've, I have, I've been here for about three years and consistently, consistently, this community 
has been open and loving and accepting. And so my vibe is really high when I'm here. Yeah. Now, I, I share this with you because I want, not because I want you to just, you know, see the, the, the lower vibrations and just pretend they're not there and move to a higher vibration. What I want you to do is recognize that there is something within you. There's something in your body temple, in your emotional body that is trying to get your attention because something wants to be cleared. And it's no different than when you have an injury and you have a pain that's connected to that injury. That pain in your body temple is telling you, take care of me. If you break a bone, you feel that pain in the broken bone, and you go and you get it taken care of. You deal with it. You listen to your body. Well, I, you, we need to listen to our emotional body as well. Because if we don't, we're just giving away our power again. If we stuff it, we're giving away our power. And so the opportunity and the invitation is to use your personal power for good. Ernest Holmes has this really wonderful quote that I'll share with you. Um, and he's really talking about paying attention to the, I'm going to use a, a, ter a, a, a f term in our philosophy, the mental equivalent that you're working with when, around power. <laughs> And he says, we must understand that it is a power for good. And we must realize that this power flows through us and that the instrument of this power is our own mind. We must begin right where we are. We must begin right where we are. That's really important. He's not saying pretend that you're happy when you're angry. <laughs> He's saying begin right where you are where you are and pay attention to what your consciousness is telling you so that you can move with it, clear what needs to be cleared, align with what wants to be aligned so that you can be in that more expanded energetic place. But it does require that we pay attention. And if you want to really tap into and be, have a greater understanding of your mental equivalent and where you might be misplacing your power, I really encourage you to check out this Money Mastery program that will be starting tomorrow night. It's not... How many have taken prosperity classes? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and what's the common thing you often hear? Somebody telling you how they got a lot of money. This is not that kind of class. It is really a class about looking at your mental equivalent and looking at where you have deposited your power in your life so that you can expand it, so you can use this hierarchy of emotions and experiences to create a different mental equivalent, understand what's in your consciousness. We're going to look at some of the false ideas you might be carrying around. The idea, it, it, it could very easily be called freedom mastery because we're looking at how to be free. Because when you're free, your energy is free. And when your energy is free, you're accessing your power. You're not giving it away. Thank you very much. So I... So let's go ahead and anchor those ideas in our own individual consciousness through this affirmative prayer. And so I invite you to either lower your gaze or close your eyes. And just take a deep breath. And allow your energy to widen and expand through the connectedness and the love that you feel in this sanctuary, knowing that that is indeed the representation of spirit, that spirit is love, and spirit is joy, spirit is peace. Spirit is everything that we experience, and it gives us the beautiful gift of free will and volition to choose 
how we are going to see it in the world. And so I know for each one that we recognize that mystery that is all about us and we don't try to control it. Instead, we simply acknowledge it. We see it in ourselves and we see it in everyone around us. For what I know is there are no exceptions to God. It is indeed intrinsic to all life. And so as we accept that highest idea of God is everywhere present in ourselves and in the world, that every living thing has the mystery deep inside of it, we celebrate that. We celebrate that highest knowing. We use those eyes of love to see the world around us. And we allow ourselves to be the movement of spirit in our form, in our words, in our feelings, in our thoughts. And we allow ourselves to express that amazing presence everywhere we go. So I know as we move through this day and this week, we are open channels of peace and love and power. And we allow that power to flow freely as the expression of the one in the individuation of the many. What a blessing to know this and to walk this out day after day. It is with a surrendered heart that I know this highest truth for myself and everyone in the sound, within the sound of my voice. We are all blessed, blessed by the power within, blessed by all the expressions of God around us. And so we simply let it go. We let it be, and together we say, and so it is.